Well, thank you, uh, Chairman Turner, and I want to thank the panel here today for your service to our country, and thank you for the work you do every day to keep our citizens safe and our country secure. I'm honored to be selected as the lead for this important working group on FISA reforms, and I'm excited to take on the necessary review. I concur with Chairman Turner that FISA, and specifically the authorities in Section 702, provide our intelligence community with an invaluable and irreplaceable tool that supports our national security apparatus in the fight against our foreign adversaries. As a former assistant U.S. attorney and specifically as a chief terrorism prosecutor overseeing the investigations and criminal prosecution, prosecutions of terrorist activities, I fully understand the value of FISA as an incredible collection asset in our fight against ongoing global and terrorist threats. This committee has been briefed countless times on the many successes directly attributable to our 702 collection authorities, some of which, uh, Director Haynes, you highlighted in your opening remarks. And I would also um, comment, uh, I know General Nakasone, last month, or I guess in January, you spoke to the Privacy and Civil Liberties Oversight Board on the, the value of 702. In that speech, you talked about this authority provides the U.S. government with irreplaceable insights, whether we are reporting on cybersecurity threats, counterterrorism threats, or protecting US and allied forces. FISA Section 702 has helped us understand the strategic intention of the foreign governments we are most interested in, including the PRC, Russia, Iran, and North Korea. Unfortunately, uh, there are far too many members of Congress on both sides of the aisle that question whether the executive branch can be trusted with this powerful tool. And that's because of there in the past and currently there has been uh, abuses and misuses of 702 by the FBI. From where I sit today, I believe that a clean legislative reauthorization of 702 is a non-starter. To reiterate what the chairman said, you must first acknowledge that a problem exists before we can formulate meaningful reforms to build back trust and confidence in the FISA process. Director Ray, I want to start with you and ask, are you willing to acknowledge that the FBI has committed abuses and violations in its use of FISA, and is that defensible? Well, first off, no violations are defensible, in my view. Uh, it's important to distinguish, uh, as I think both the ranking member and the chair may have, uh, between things that happened with Title I FISA, you know, for example, that were at issue in the Inspector General report related to the Crossfire Hurricane matter, which, as I've said before, describes conduct that I consider totally unacceptable, totally unacceptable and unrepresentative of the FBI. And we implemented all sorts of reforms that I could go into on that. Then over on the 702 side, there have been compliance incidents that have to be addressed. And we have taken all sorts of steps that I could walk the committee through here uh, to address that issue. And what's important to note about that is that all of the reports to date that have been shared with the public and I think with the Congress about 702 compliance issues all predate, that is the conduct at issue, predate all these reforms, which is why it's so important for me to be able to let the committee know, uh, and this will be coming in, the, uh, in more detail in the next ODNI report that comes out uh, in late April, I think it is, that we have now seen a 93% decrease year over year from 21 to 22 in the number of US person queries made by you know, the FBI. And that's not just an aberration of that one year. If you compare it to 2020, so the year before that, it's about an 85% increase. So it's a dramatic increase uh, in the uh, judiciousness with which our people are running uh, their queries. Uh, and we are absolutely committed to making sure that we show you, the rest of the members of Congress and the American people that we're worthy of these incredibly valuable authorities. Well, I appreciate you mentioned that. I would say uh, because of a number of these abuses and non-compliance issues with the FBI, would you agree that the FBI has a trust issue with the American public and specifically with members of Congress? Well, certainly uh, anytime we have anybody who, who has a, a trust issue with us, we want to try to address it. Uh, I think when I see, look at the American people more broadly, uh, I think a lot of it is reaction to specific cases and things here and there, but I will tell you that I see the American people showing up in droves to come work at the FBI. That, putting that to the side, putting that to the side, we clearly have work to do and we're eager to do it with this committee 
to show that we can be worthy stewards of these important authorities. Uh, and so if there are questions that, are, that need to be answered, I understand completely why those questions are being raised. We brought them on ourselves. And I want to make sure that we can show you that we can answer those questions. And, and how do you give reassurance to the American people that their civil liberties are going to be protected? Well, the, the changes that I started describing at a high level uh, include all sorts of things. So that's everything from system changes that prevent even, even inadvertent compliance incidents. That's new safeguards, new approvals, new oversights all sorts of mandatory enhanced training. I created and stood up an entire new office of internal audit that did not exist at the FBI before and brought in a former agent who's also a former big four accounting firm partner to run that office of internal audit. And that office is focused exclusively on FISA compliance. Uh, ultimately, in the long run, we want that office to take on other kinds of compliance too. But because of the importance of this issue, because of the importance of the concerns that you uh, and others have framed, we've dedicated that office of internal audit to focus exclusively on this important authority and compliance with it. So those are some of the things. Obviously, there's a lot more that I could get into, but I'm sympathetic to the time constraints here. Well, thank you for that. Uh, unfortunately, I believe uh, that the FBI does have a significant trust issue with members of Congress, um, and that's part of what we'll deal with with the working group. And it's, I would say that trust has only been made worse by the recently declassified Section 702 compliance report covering December 2019 through May of 2020. Uh, in that report, there was a number of concerning things that were brought forward. There was queries done inappropriately by the FBI on a local political party, and then secondarily uh, included in there was one specific instance of abuse involving multiple queries of a sitting member of Congress in the FBI's FISA databases. Buried in a footnote of the declassified assessment, this specific incident described as follows. Quote, an intelligence analyst with the FBI conducted multiple queries using only the name of a US congressman. The 707 report describes the specific facts that led the analyst to conduct these queries these queries retrieved unminimized FISA-acquired information, including Section 702-acquired products that were opened. FBI advised that no minimized FISA-acquired information was disseminated or used in any way. This was reviewed, obviously, by the National Security Division of the U.S. Department of Justice and ODNI, and based on what they reviewed, they found these queries to be wholly inappropriate, not compliant, and a violation because they were overly broad as constructed. Uh, I think that the report's characterization of this FBI analyst's action as a mere misunderstanding of querying procedures is indicative of the culture that the FBI has come to expect and even tolerate. It is also indicative of the FBI's continued failure to appreciate how the misuse of this authority is seen on Capitol Hill. And I want to make clear the FBI's inappropriate querying of a duly elected member of Congress is egregious um, and a violation not only that degrades the trust in FISA, but is viewed as a threat to the separation of powers. Um, I have had the opportunity to review the classified summary of this violation, and it is my opinion that the member of Congress that was wrongfully queried multiple times solely by his name was in fact me. Um, now, uh, this careless abuse of this critical tool by the FBI is unfortunate. Ironically, I think it gives me a good opportunity and a unique perspective on what's wrong with the FBI and the problems that the FBI has. Um, to highlight that, I would like to submit for the record a couple things. Uh, February 28th, 2023, Director Haynes and Attorney General Garland uh, asked for a reauthorization from the Congress, but they go in to add that there needs to be rigorous and ongoing oversight of the FBI 702 querying, specifically their collection decisions on U.S. person inquiries, and they will be evaluating and taking remedial action to address identified incidents of noncompliance by the FBI. I'd like to submit that for the record, Mr. Chairman. Without objection. Secondly, uh, a letter was sent to you on February 15th, uh, Director Ray, uh, 2023, from Congressman uh, Andy Biggs of Arizona. And he talks about uh, the declassified 2021 report detailing these continued abuses of 702. 
in there, he mentions that these instances should frighten every American and Congress deserves an explanation for them. He additionally talks about these, quote, backdoor searches are a violation of the Fourth Amendment and cannot continue. I'd ask to submit that for the record. Without objection. Thirdly, uh, article in Politico from March 1st, titled DOJ Faces Bipartisan Falniks or Army of Skeptics on FISA 702. In that article, again, referring to this declassified report on the inappropriate use of 702, it talks about, um, in a sign of, uh, I'll quote here, in a sign of odd political bedfellows in the House, uh, who are pushing reforms, uh, conservative Congressman Andy Biggs and progressive member uh, Pramila Jalapai, both members of the Judiciary Committee, publicly vetted on the detail tucked in the footnote of the report. An FBI intelligence analyst improperly queried surveillance data on a U.S. member of the House. I'd ask to submit that for the record. Without objection. Lastly, the footnote that I mentioned uh, that has been declassified states in there that the National Security Division of the U.S. Department of Justice and ODNI assessed, based on the facts and analysis of this FBI analyst, that these queries were not compliant because they were overly broad as constructed. I'd like to submit that for the record. Without objection. 